Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Egan, and welcome to the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame uh, annual auction. We're kicking off the annual auction here to support the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. And uh, we have a big night for you tonight. We have a, a special guest, and we have a great panel of people that are going to join us tonight and uh, talk about all the different things and how long the, the annual auction is going to be. Of course, normally the auction would have taken place at the induction of the 2019, the class of 2019 in Sun Valley, Idaho this past spring. Um, but that has been postponed, of course, to all the craziness in the world today. Uh, but before we uh, kick it off to our panel, I want to give a big congratulations out there to the inductees of the 2019 uh, U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, the class of 2019. Of course, uh, world famous uh, freestyle skier Scotty Brooksbanks was inducted into the Ski Hall of Fame. Uh, Kit Delorier, who skied off Everest and is the first person to ski all seven summits around the world. Of course, Johnny Spillane, uh, the Nordic combined skier who uh, paved the way for uh, and set the standard for Nordic skiing combined for the U.S. for the U.S. at the Olympic level, uh, and of course, co-founders co of the National Brotherhood of Skiing Skiers, uh, Ben Finley and Arthur Clay, were also inducted in 2019. Uh, the world famous. Uh, Greg Stump, the filmmaker Greg Stump, was inducted into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. And, of course, uh, one of my favorites, Sherman Poppin, the man who invented the snurfer, was also part of this class. And tonight, uh, joining us on the panel, his special guest is uh, James Newhouse, uh, the man who designs all of the great ski maps uh, and trail maps for all the most of the uh, ski areas here in the United States. So, Let's go to our panel. I'd like to introduce you to our panel tonight. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the executive director of the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, um, Justin. Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, Dan. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And, of course, uh, uh, Phil from Pug Ski. Phil, it's great to see you out there. And uh, you're in California. Is that right? Uh, Reno, Nevada. Beautiful. Close enough to Lake Tahoe that you can almost see it, right? The, yeah. uh, and of course, uh, our honored guest and honored member of the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, James Newhouse. James, how are you doing? Very good. Good to be here. Great. Thanks for joining us. Is that one of your beautiful photo paintings uh, behind you, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, that is. That's, um, that's a spot up, on, uh, up in Montana. Oh, beautiful. Just Lovely, to... not Montana. Well, uh, I thought what we would do tonight is throw it over to Justin because Justin has some news for everybody. Uh, and uh, bring us up to speed on how the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame has been surviving during COVID and all the things that are happening up there in the UP, Justin. Uh, fill us in. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Dan. A lot of it's, um, you know, thanks to, you know, a dedicated group of people, yourself included, uh, volunteers. Uh, Phil, also, we, uh, you know, when the, when the economy came to a screeching and abrupt halt, so did... Uh, you know, the donations and the different uh, funding mechanisms that help us continue to do what we do. Um, and then, of course, pair that with, um, you know, postponing the Sun Valley event uh, scheduled for the end of March. Um, we've had to really get creative, you know, and there's a lot of people that have uh, come together uh, between, you know, um, the, the SBA and some of the work we were able to do to take advantage of, of some of the government stuff with the PPP and stuff. And um, our, our staff is uh, still, besides myself, um, kind of furloughed or laid off until August 4th. But, you know, we opened the museum back up and we're, we're doing private tours um, and uh, people are continuing to donate. Thanks to everybody that has done that. Um, we've got some uh, some really good uh, things that will come out of uh, the, the upcoming induction uh, scheduled in December for, for Sun Valley that we can talk about a little bit later as a teaser, uh, maybe in the Q&A or more towards the end of this session. But um, we're, you know, we're surviving and we're finding, you know, new unique ways uh, like what we're, what we're going to talk about here tonight um, to, you know, create um, things to fill the gap of, of uh, what we were left with by having to uh, postpone there in March. So, uh, sales are up, Dan, and uh, and and the wind's blowing. So we'll see kind of how things uh, shape out here. Appreciate you and all you're doing. Uh, it's great. It's good to get an update. Of course, if uh, if you've never made it to the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame uh, in Ishpening, 
Michigan. It's it's definitely uh, it, it's it's a, it's the building. It's everything inside that building and and what it represents. And that's what we're here to do tonight is to support uh, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame because of what it does for the industry and what it does for everybody in the industry. Uh, James, of course, you were a part of the class of 2019. Congratulations. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, when you first started out making trail maps, did you ever imagine uh, you would make it to the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame? Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, whenever <laughs> I first started in this, uh, in this business, I, uh, I couldn't really ski. I kind of learned on the job. So uh, the idea of being in the Ski Hall of Fame, uh, any Hall of Fame, uh, is just something that uh, wasn't even something to think about. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't, even through my career, I, uh, I never really considered that, uh, that I would uh, be considered. It's, uh, it's a great honor. I'm really glad that, that I had, a, uh, had the opportunity and the luck and the uh, good fortune of being able to produce what I did. <clears throat> I think that's one of the most amazing things about the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame is the diversity uh, of what the hall represents. Uh, of course, great feats and, and Olympic moments, uh, but also the people that really help shape the, the industry and really may bring it to life. Uh, and there's no doubt that trail maps are an intricate part of the ski industry. And one of the things, James, you and I did speak about this uh, back in the spring is you really create a lot of moments away from the ski hill, a lot of dreams and, and, and ambition for families and kids and all of us that look at ski maps and go, you know, one day, one day I'm gonna drop in on this trail. Uh, that's really quite an amazing thing that you've created. Uh, do you ever think of it from that point of view that people paw all over these trail maps and dream about where they're going to ski oh absolutely I, you know i i uh, really take an extra special effort to uh to to do these realistically and to uh, glamorize the uh, ski area if you will um <clears throat> you know looking at the ski area from a from an airplane uh, it's not nearly as colorful as what I paint it, and uh, I, I just really uh, uh, try to get in all these individual uh, features of the mountain that, that can give it so much character and, and, uh, and, and invite people to come into the scene and explore it. Uh, I think it's a big uh, uh, factor in, in a hand-painted ski map. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, Phil, uh, with Pug Ski, you know, uh, a partner for this U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. Uh, what's it mean to you uh, to partner with well, Hall of Fame the way you have? We've always been the historical site and we've always had an appreciation for skiing history, both on the snow and uh, in every aspect of it. So partnering with the Hall was really important for us. We feel what they bring to the industry and, for, and knowing our heritage is something that we really believe in. We have one of the largest heritage sections on our site that people come to. It's a big draw for our site. And then to be able to partner with the hall and meet, quite frankly, incredible people like yourself, James, uh, working with Justin hand in hand. I mean, it's been an honor for us and it really is a labor of love. Absolutely. And uh, before we get too deep into the show tonight, uh, we have a little uh, promo for the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, a video we want to show you. Uh, from the induction for the class of 2018, which took place in uh, beautiful uh, Park City and Snowbird and, uh, and of course, Utah. Uh, let's roll that tape. Our job as snowboarders is to complement the hill, to leave our tracks, to leave our little piece of art and tracks behind. This weight of the industry starts to settle in when you realize how many people have given so much of their lives 
to gliding over, through, and on snow. And welcome to the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame annual induction. It's great to be here in Salt Lake City, Utah, home of the greatest snow on earth. These are individuals that over the course of their careers have been standouts and have left an indelible mark on our industry. Tonight, we honor a coach, an innovator, a legend, the world champion, a two-time Olympic medalist, the queen of mobile, a promoter, and a leader. I always, uh, when I when I see you know all the videos and the things that are created up in the hall, Justin, it, it really stirs in me, uh, you know, what you represent up there in Ishpeming in the in the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. You get to actually interact with every uh, honored member, and uh, I wondered how how has that shaped your point of view of the ski industry when you get to meet uh, all these different people. Well, it's it's really quite incredible, and I'm honored to to have a chance to do the job. Um, Phil said it best. He said, um, "You know, Justin, I love going skiing with you on some of these trips because we show up to the mountain, and it's like showing up for a a pickup game of baseball, and the 1929 Yankees are there to play us. Um, so it's uh, it, it's great. It's uh, such an honor to ski with." Uh, ski with the professionals and, and uh, tell stories. And, you know, the thing that resonates, um, you know, most with me is that it's such a small industry and everybody knows everybody. When people come home to Ishpeming uh, here and, and tour the museum, it, it you know, it, it gets me every time because, um, you know, yourself included, Dan, when you were inducted um, and, and set foot in here for the first time um, to, to watch, it's like a kid in a candy store. You're, you're going, oh my God, I can't believe um, that I'm at the level of of these people, and here's my you know ugly mug next to um, Schmitty and all these other people that um, you know uh, both were with you as colleagues, and also you know you're standing on the shoulders of those people. So uh, small industry, everybody knows everybody. Um, I'm I'm never uh, I'm never more amazed um, than when I'm talking to uh, one of the honor members about. Uh, Really, anything, industry or not, they 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 blow my mind. They're such uh, incredible individuals and people that are, you know, at an incredible level with what they do. Yeah, there's no doubt, and it's very impactful. And uh, for me now, you know, sort of in the role I'm playing with uh, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame, I love it because I get to talk to all the inductees as well, and. Uh, you know, I, I love it because you really feel the passion when you speak to people. And, and James, I mean, uh, what was the first uh, mountain that you ever painted? What was the first trail map you ever did? Well, the very first one was Boreal in um, California. So a very small area. Um, Boreal. Getting started. And, and uh, so it and, and, uh, and its uh, sister ski area there, uh, uh, what was that, um, well, I can't think of the name right now, just a little tiny area. Donner? The, uh, uh, no, no, it was across the tracks and uh, on the other side, Ash. Uh, um, hmm. yeah. Sugar Bowl, maybe? It was, um, so, I mean, you don't, you don't wake up one day and just want to start painting trail maps. Uh, <laughs> What was the inspiration for it? Well, I've always wanted to be a landscape artist uh, uh, ever since uh, high school days. And, uh, and uh, it, it took a while. I was 40 years old before I painted my first trail map. But uh, uh, really my, my uh, real purpose of painting trail maps at the time was simply to make a living. And, uh, you know, I was looking for a job. It's, uh, it can be tough out there in the art world and the graphics field. And uh, so I looked up Bill Brown and 
and uh, and really uh, was quite amazed by his process and and what he was doing and and I just very fortunate that he was uh, he was looking to do something else and so he just kind of turned it over to me and and uh, I all of a sudden jumped into a field that was at the age of forty I was uh, uh, I had a whole new career and uh, it's been uh, it's been amazing it's just been uh, an incredible journey, and, and it, uh, it, it's. It, I, I had a lot of things that uh, happened along the way that uh, just helped helped out the career. You know, like uh, uh, John Fry calling me and, and wanting to do have me do the spread on uh, uh, Snow Country Magazine. So, and, and that really really uh, jump started me too. So uh, that's really great. I mean, I love how uh, certain things happen that trigger a whole change in life and a change in career. Uh, we have some really wonderful videos uh, that we'd like to show about about Jim's work, and uh, why don't we roll with that? <clears throat> Many skiers come up to me, and uh, we get to talking. And it comes out that I'm the trail map artist, and they'll uh, say, "Oh my gosh, I thought I thought that was done by computers." I said, "No, I paint every one of those trees." I started painting ski maps in 1988. Actually, probably 1987. I never, never tired of it. That's what I do. That's what I live for. You know, I paint a hand painted map. And in today's world, the computer has come along and many people have this mindset that the best map would be produced by a computer. I can get to the top of the mountain, I can look around, I can feel it. And, and that's what's important, you know. The magnitude of what I've done is, whenever I think about it, maybe a little staggering. I've painted maps for 200 ski resorts. And as you flip through this book, you'll see all these different areas, all these different countries that I've been privileged to visit. I, I'm just so excited that this can all be combined into one book, all my work. And uh, it's been a dream of mine for many, many years. There isn't many people that, around the world that paint ski maps. I've really been blessed that I was one of them. That's that's awesome. That's pretty amazing right there, and uh, I'd love to see that. Um, and and I and of course tonight we're here to help support the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame uh, with the annual auction. Phil, tell us uh, tell us what items are available from Jim's uh, that are available. Well, right now we have two items up, and if you go to pugski.com, you'll see up in the upper banner that there is a Hall of Fame. Uh, button to click on. It looks like a little gavel, and that's going to bring you to the their specific page. Right now, we do have Mount Sneffels, which is um, an oil painting from uh, James that is up for bid. It's a one of a kind. It is framed, just a magnificent piece. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to do the honor for somebody to have it in their house above their fireplace. But you can also go to the site and purchase the book. The, and I think there's a good opportunity there. We have them here. They're ready to ship. The most important thing here is all of the proceeds for this do go to the Hall of Fame and to support the Hall of Fame. That's awesome. And, of course, we have some questions here on Facebook for you, uh, James. And one of them is you mentioned him earlier, but uh, you, you met Bill Brown and, of course, uh, Hal Shelton as well. Tell us about that. Well, uh, yeah, Hal uh... – Hal lived in Golden, and, and he he uh, initiated the trail maps. I think his first one was Vail, and uh, he was an avid skier, and uh, he was looking for a way that he could get um, lift tickets, you know. And so uh, he he uh, had the idea, and and uh, Hal was a also a true cartographer, uh, a genius on 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 portraying the uh, terrain of the earth 
and uh, so he just put his talents to work, and and uh, the trail map was was formed. Uh, it was it was really uh, uh, very interesting to to visit his studio and talk with him. And then Bill, of course, uh, Bill, I uh, initiated my career with him, and and uh, again, these two uh, artists had a uh, had certainly a uh, technique that they put together and they passed it on to me. So I was just trying to follow their steps and uh, fill their shoes. And they were big shoes. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it was just a great honor to uh, be in their studios and talk to them. That's pretty amazing. Uh, we have a question also on Facebook. Uh, what's the most challenging ski area you've ever painted? Uh, well, I'd have to say Sun Peaks uh, because of the makeup of the mountain. They uh, they have a multitude of slopes uh, coming into a valley, so you have to uh, spread out this valley into and in, and in, and get all the runs running downhill. And and uh, you know I do a lot of stretching and and uh, and put the mountains in some. Uh, contortions that that isn't natural but i try to make it look natural and uh, certainly uh that one was really tough because of that because of the situation i can go around a mountain easier than i can spread it out from a valley and um, and, and uh, sun peaks is one view with many many slopes another one would be mount bachelor you know that is uh, uh, that's awesome. I love, I love that perspective on that. Yeah, and, and I, I do pride myself in being the artist that uh, kind of introduced the satellite, what I call, quote, the satellite view, uh, uh, viewed from more straight up and uh, down and, and, and places like, uh, well, Heavenly uh, was a satellite view and, and uh, and of course, uh, Mount Bachelor, uh, to get get all those uh, trails on the opposite side of the mountain to go. That's that's great. That's great, and uh, I I love that perspective. And uh, and it, it's so challenging uh, to to put that all together. Justin, uh, tell us and everybody out there listening tonight just how important this auction and is the UF Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, this is this is a very important uh, new initiative that the Hall has launched. Um, thanks to, to Phil and the Icon Pass people. Um, it, you know, we're really trying to, and Phil has uh, his garage and a storage unit full of uh, inventory that we have for Sun Valley. So uh, to be able to take that and uh, get that in the right hands, um, some of it's time sensitive, like passes for this year that will be auctioning off um, everything from uh, next year's gear that's still uh, not available for purchase, uh, both on the hard and soft goods side, um, next year's fashion, some really neat items. Um, it's, it's critical. You know, like I said at the onset, for those that weren't uh, here at the beginning, you know, when, when the event was postponed and uh, COVID started to happen, um, all of our funding came kind of to a screeching halt as well. So um, to be able to subscribe to this, you know, we're doing some unique things, even just, even just visiting uh, pugski.com and going to the site and subscribing um, to, to the auction for updates. You're gonna be entered in for a chance to win an icon pass uh, of your choice, whether it be this year or next year, or whenever, if you've already bought this year. Um, it, it's vital, Dan. I mean, we're, we're try we, we have to replace that revenue um, with with some other source um, to help us fuel uh, our, our live event that'll be coming up in in uh, the fall winter and uh, and other operations uh, to help us you know continue to fulfill our mission you know we've got another election underway um, it's it's full steam ahead um, we just announced the um, the the official ballot for the class of 2020 and uh, we just need to kind of keep on keeping on and this is um, a a vital component to to helping make sure that we're able to do that. Yeah, for sure. It, it's really crucial. 
crucial. And uh, and partnering with Pug Ski, of course, makes it uh, during these times a lot more uh, potential to to pull this off. And of course, we always appreciate everybody out there who does support all the efforts at the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. Uh, and Phil, you know, just kind of roll through through it. We've got some beautiful we got a beautiful painting tonight uh from yep. from james we've got uh of course his book but we have other items as well we do and if you go to that page there is some items that you can just purchase uh you don't need to bid on them uh some of our other sponsors that have worked with the hall of fame such as Colkia, has a micro pack that you can purchase um toco there's a tuning kit on there goo has uh some some performance uh food on there that that we want to pass along so there are things that we want to make sure that these that the hall gets taken care of and we felt felt that we could really offer a good avenue and a platform to get these products out there again these are things that we have on right now but we also do have a lot of things coming up as justin said we do have basically a storage unit filled with product some of it's next year some of it's unique collectibles that are one-of-a-kind pieces that we're really excited about, um, that you'll be the envy of all your ski friends to have. And we're looking forward to getting them into the rotation. And we definitely want to help and support the people that are getting into the hall, such as James now. And again, James, I know I've congratulated you before, but again, congratulations uh, on your induction. It's very well deserved. But we also want to let people know that we do have some other items coming up uh, that I think they're going to have a lot of fun bidding on. And again, it's one of those things, bid early and bid often. Thank you, Phil. And uh, the, uh, the painting that's coming up that's going to be up for auction is, uh, is, a, is a shot that I uh, dug up from my old photographs, my old aerials. And uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, I, I get to cover a lot of really interesting terrain in my flights uh, in doing the aerials for the ski areas. So uh, Mount Sniffles was just standing there uh, so big and right in behind is the ski slopes. And it just uh, took me back and I decided that uh, I really wanted to paint this one. I, I don't do many like this. And uh, uh, so it's really an enjoyment to do it. Is is uh, back in 1998. Yeah, the other painting, Jim, uh, another question from Facebook somebody posted is, um, what's something that you've always wanted to paint but haven't found the time? <laughs> well, I happen to be working on it right now. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I hadn't had, had the time. It, it was uh, back in 1994 whenever I was skiing uh, 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 Aspen Highlands and uh, the view up towards the Maroon Peak and Pyramid Peak was just so awesome. And uh, so whenever I got back from that, I did a small sketch and uh, it, it's been in my flat file for years and years, and 30 years. <laughs> and uh, whenever this uh, came up uh, to auction, I pulled out that old sketch and, uh, and framed it and, and uh, donated it for, uh, for auction. Uh, for the hall here, and and I'm painting on the finished scene right now. It's changed somewhat, but but that was the inspiration. That's really awesome. Yeah, there's quite a few um, comments and questions coming coming up, and you know we we had a few of our own just for discussion that uh, we wanted to bring up. Um, but you talked earlier about kind of the uh, the satellite <laughs> view that you take, and you really just kind of flatten out. Uh, the map, um, Bill Jensen. Uh, don't, don't use the word flatten. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I put, I put the dimensions in there. Right. Yeah. So people are asking what scale you paint in in relation to uh, the finished map. Do you know? Do you know the answer to that? Uh, well, there is not any uh, uh, magical uh, uh, equation uh, because I have to do so much stretching and. Uh, and manipulation of the slopes, I don't really have. It's It all just comes from my mind, and, and it, it, it's like whenever I see it, I just want to uh, take that. Uh, I can visualize it in my mind and 
And uh, so I do what I have to to put it on a flat sheet of paper. And uh, yeah. there's a lot of twisting of the mountains. So there is no uh, formula or, or any program that can really uh, be the answer for any certain mountain. Sure. So when you're up in the up in the plane or the helicopter, you're trying to uh, really envision at that point, or do you do it down the road? Where I mean, you're you're obviously trying to encapsulate the entire mountain experience, um, both beauty and practicality, um, and and usability of of the map for the end user. Really, which your art becomes almost a navigational um, set of beacons for people on the mountain various times throughout any single day for their experience how does that all how does that all come to fruition well it uh well today it's a little different than it was uh, 30 years ago because you do have google earth and i can get on google earth and uh and and uh, just scope out a mountain pretty well and and know uh, at that point what perspective i want to take and so with that i'll go ahead and quote a um, um, give the mountain a price for the project, and and then the uh, flight uh, uh, is very important to get all that information from the air. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the first pass that I'll do is a very high pass, probably uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand feet above the summit, and I'll take a sweep of the mountain and take some good panoramic shots, and then I'll do the next pass about 500 feet above the summit and get all the detail uh, off in the distance behind it because we will have some some mountains uh, in the background and uh, give it a good setting and and do the detail shots of the summit and then I'll drop the plane to uh, uh, even mid mountain height you know and take another pass at the lower areas. And the final one, of course, would be flying a, uh, across the base and getting good shots of the, all the buildings and the structures. And uh, and by the time I've done this, I've pretty much got the perspective in mind that will work for the mountain. There's occasions that uh, uh, two different uh, views would be equally effective, and so I'll give the client a uh, a, a uh, thumbnail sketch of each each view. Uh, that they could consider and decide on. And so there you have it. Awesome. Uh, James, I do have a quick question for you. With mountains changing and, and trails being added and lifts being added, what, is the, what mountain have you painted the most or had to go back and repaint the most? Oh, probably, probably Sun Peaks. Uh, Sun Peaks have been, has been doing an awful lot of uh, 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 expansion, you know, in the, in the recent years. Uh, also, uh, Heavenly, I've done an awful lot of Heavenly. And, um, but with today's technology, a lot of it, uh, right, like right now, I, I've just uh, finished up a, a revision for, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, wow, sometimes it just, I've got. I've done so many ski areas. I can't keep them all in my mind. I guess. But now, um, do Jim? Do they call you, or or how does that happen? Yeah, they'll call me, and they'll just uh, say we've got a we've got additions to do. We need to. We've got a major expansion. So Lake Louise is the one that uh, I'm working on right now, and and uh, they they've uh, added quite a bit. So I'll go in on the actual original painting. And uh, in, in this case, I had to add to the left side, plus I had to redo uh, about a third of the mountain. Uh, so I'll, re I'll just go in with water and remove the color and, uh, and repaint it. So do you retain in, in your um, studio there all the original paintings? I have almost all of them, yes. <laughs> That's really cool. You that I don't, uh, you know, early on, um, I had sent out the, the the original first fifty. I sent back to the ski areas, and uh, I, I had this fear in my mind that I'd have a house fire, and and oh my gosh, I'd lose all these. So, uh, so I sent them out, and 
and through the years there's uh it's come back to me that the, a lot of them have been lost or damaged and uh, so now i keep them all that's great and you realize the work that goes into every single one of those trees that you paint i don't really want to do it again <laughs> right not yeah, the same area not the same area right i mean uh, not just a repeat of what i've done before yeah, and I, I just think about something like Sun Valley, who's putting in a new lift and kind of clearing two um, new runs, from what I understand. Um, our partners up there, uh, you know, they'll, they'll likely call you and you'll have, to, um, you'll have to expand that canvas a little bit out to the west, I suppose. Uh, I suppose so. I haven't heard from them, so I don't know. <laughs> it's in the plans. Um, well, well, I'm going to retire, too, now, you know, so. Oh, no, we didn't know that. Come on. Well, I'm, I'm kind of semi-retired, so I pass a few jobs on and, uh, and then take the ones that I really would have a passion for doing. Sure. Good. Well, it looks like, um, looks like Dan might have dropped off. We're um, kind of into our roundtable discussion area here. And, um, you know, Dan was going to thank the panel and stuff. We've got a few minutes here. Um, if there's other questions that come up live, we can, we can discuss them. We're looking at, um, you know, a, a few things coming up here, um, you know, in the auction that are, are really exciting. Um, a, a, another uh, painting of yours, Jim, uh, do, you, do you know what, uh, what that uh, particular one was? Could you talk about that maybe a little bit? Oh, the uh, Sun Valley? Was it Sun Valley? Yep. Yeah, I did a little one of Sun Valley. Uh, well, not this one. Now the one that's up is uh, is the one of Mount Sniffles, which uh, has the slopes of Telluride in the background. Yep. And um, and, and that that's the one that I um, um, flew back in 1994, and this was just a uh, one of the aerials that I pulled out and uh, decided to paint. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, we've got. Um, We've got your book on sale, of course, at, um, at pugski.com at the Hall of Fame auction site. We've got it on sale for ninety dollars. Um, your uh, your team of of publishers and promoters have been, uh, you know, amazing to work with. Uh, we did the book signing, of course, with you at OR, um, which was really awesome. It's really cool to see people come up. You've got so many fans, Jim. You're you're super humble, but people are just um, kind of. Uh, amazed by the fact that one guy pumps out, you know, all these maps, you flip through the pages of your book. And like you said, I think for, uh, for you, it's cool to see all of your work in one book, but for, you know, the average skier who's, who's looked at these maps going, geez, these are really cool. Um, and they helped me get from A to B. They helped me get to Apre on time. They helped me get back to my car and back to my resort. Um, it's really quite fascinating and to see all the people coming up at OR um, just fascinated with your work is really cool and um, you know it's it's sure an honor to uh, to be able to eventually induct you into the hall uh, so well deserved you know so yeah, congratulations I've told you it a hundred times it's a super bummer that the March event fell apart but you'll get uh, even though you don't want to be on stage, you'll get your time on stage. <laughs> All right, Justin. Well, I I appreciate that. It's a, it's a super honor. Uh, it's it's a, an amazing industry, and uh, and it's been so fun through the years to um, paint for the skiers. I, I really do think that that I paint for the skiers as much as I paint for the resorts. Yeah. And uh, and, and and the. Uh, I, I just blown away by the lines of uh, at the uh, signings. Uh, uh, couldn't believe it. So it, it was great meeting all the skiers and and uh, talking to them, and and uh, it, it's just something very special. Yeah. Well, you'll be. You want to go ahead, Phil? Let me add along with the book. It's not a book that you just read and page through. You do get immersed in it. It is just incredible. You go from page to page, and especially the areas that you've been to, you, you just read them again. You just look at the images and you remember the trails that you were on. It truly is a special experience uh, going through the book. And it is a must for every skier, for everybody who knows the skier. Thank so, you. I mean, you don't have this book, you really do need it. 
Well, I really appreciate that. I, it, it, you know, this uh, this came out pretty much uh, the way that I had envisioned it, but uh, certainly uh, Todd Bennett, you know, his input on this and 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 Jason Blevins, his writings uh, all really uh, uh, helped out in this book. And and uh, there's some history in it, and I think the history is really important and nice. And there's there's a lot of uh, input from other uh, key. Uh, um, people in the industry too, you know, and I, and I appreciate all their input. And uh, it, it, it just to just have a book of ski maps, I, I wanted a little more than that. Yeah, I wanted to hold your interest, and and uh, it's kind of a dream book, isn't it? So you kind of look in there and see what you'd like to ski. Yeah, I think I think Phil hit it right on the head, and a plug for the resorts too is. You look at some of those maps and you go, geez, um, it looks like looking back, I skied about 15 percent of that mountain. I, <laughs> I really should get back, should get back and check out the rest. Um, it, it really is tough when you're there to um, to, to really explore, um, you know, with or without stopping and looking at the map. You get so um, into where you're where you're exploring, whether it's on skis or a snowboard, you it's good to be able to step back and take a look. And, you know, one of the other unique things I thought was really cool, and I don't know if these come with the book or not, but there's like this big fold out map, Jim, that has them all in one. And Phil and I talked about framing it and just kind of putting a giant X over anywhere where we've skied. Oh, yeah. does, does that come with every book? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, no, I haven't thought of that. Yeah. That's It'd a, be one hell of a puzzle too. <laughs> it would be a good puzzle. <laughs> it would be a very challenging puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that on the on 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 mind, so maybe that'll come. Good. Well, I appreciate uh, I appreciate your time, Jim, Phil. Um, there are some uh, some other questions. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. I don't think they're probably run over a little bit, no uh, but we did have a question regarding James' first background in cartography photography uh do you have one um if not how did you get involved in it i, I really don't have a background in cartography um, to my mind as you can see with all my work cartography to me is a bird's eye view i mean it's a perspective it's not uh it's not uh, uh measurements that uh uh, are true to each other necessarily, but it's it's true to the mind. I mean, um, um, I feel in many ways that mine is more accurate than than uh, getting a topo map because it, it's a it's a matter of of uh, of interpreting the the uh, terrain in a way that uh, everybody can understand it. And I've always I've always felt like. I, I always try to make something absolutely crystal clear at a glance. So if you glance at it, you'll know, you'll know it. And uh, so that's, that's my cartography background. I have none. Yeah, we've all been, we've all been on a mountain going, do I go, can I go down from here or up from here to get to there? Um, and, and your maps do seem to you know, up is up and down is down. Um, it, it is tough to see on topo whether or not point A is higher than point B, but um, certainly uh, understand that that perspective. And I think you have to put it in, you know, the the mind's eye of not only yourself but those that are trying to navigate the um, the no, trail. Also, it's it's also uh, involved in the uh, in the trees. I mean. Uh, you ski from deciduous trees to conifers, and uh, you know it's important to to place those trees where they really are. So uh, uh, there's a lot of little uh, elements that uh, that make a good map that's that's very visual uh, instead of uh, car cartography. Absolutely. Well, we've got a, a huge appreciation for your work, Jim, um, and uh, and your career and everything you've done for the industry. You um, certainly waltzed your way through a very extremely selective uh, nomination process. Um, on on any given year, we have between thirty five and forty five people vying for for just five spots in this non athlete category for the Hall of Fame. You're you're going to be joining the ranks of. Uh, some some huge giants here and and uh, got oh, the necessary votes.
Yeah, and we're we're excited to have you. Um, you know, I appreciate your time here here today, and and those watching uh, the uh, the paintings you've done uh, in kind at at no cost to the museum are are hugely appreciated. I, I want to tell you that uh, they're going to go a long way. We're we're looking forward to getting the bids on the paintings and finding a a rightful owner of of both the. Uh, Mount Sniffles with Telluride in the background and uh, the, the Sun Valley painting, which I'm sure will be a, a huge hit as well. Um, and then uh, working our way through to some other items um, that are relevant to some of your classmates. We're gonna be, um, we're gonna be auctioning off one of the original snurfers from uh, that Sherman Poppin uh, started manufacturing with Brunswick um, back in the uh, 70s when, when snowboarding really came to fruition. That's uh, oh, yeah, his, yeah. his daughter, Wendy, there um, currently with, with one of these original, uh, you know, beauties. That thing will go uh, up for auction here. Uh, Phil's got a pair of uh, the skis, uh, puppet version ballets with Spademan bindings on them. We've got uh, some stuff from some of our great sponsors like Mammoth that... Uh, have Abbey packs and and different uh, you know modern things. So a really good mix, um, I would say. Phil Hay of uh, you know the the state of the art gear and next year's hard and soft goods and some really cool vintage uh, stuff relevant to uh, to our heritage. Now we're now, really excited. I, oh, I'm sorry, James. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Go then. <laughs> Uh, we're really excited with this partnership and a, being able to um, offer all of these items. And again, the important thing that it does go to support the Hall of Fame. I mean, we've got a collection of stuff coming up that, quite frankly, I've been drooling over some of these items. Uh, you had mentioned the ski, and it's not only a pair of the ski puppets, but they're also signed by Alan Schoenberger, who was the puppet. So we're excited to bring them aboard, and I think we're going to have some surprises in this, too, coming up. And this is what we're really hoping is this series, this is gonna become a series as far as offering these items. Uh, when a new item comes up, we're hopefully gonna bring the person that is involved with that into another video like this and where they can talk about what they're bringing in. Uh, be it with some manufacturers, with some special items, some prototype skis. We've got some magnificent uh, equipment coming from next year, uh, which will be there also. So again, if you go to our site and at the top of the Pug Ski page, you'll see the Hall of Fame auction with that little gavel that will click onto where the auction items are and also the other items that you can purchase. So as these items sell, we're going to replenish them. So please do check back often on this. Uh, and we're going to definitely going to work on start promoting this more. And again, all of the, the proceeds do go to the Hall of Fame. So you're supporting a really good cause. And you're supporting our heritage in the industry. Yeah, great. Thank you, Phil. And again, thanks, Jim. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks to Nelson and the production team for yeah. our first yeah. go around. Um, this is great. We're going to have Jim's second piece coming up in uh, the next few weeks here as we establish our order. Um, again, thanks to the Icon Pass and Altera Mountain Group, um, that whole uh, group for, for offering us uh, up uh, so many passes to be able to use for uh, fundraising and uh, helping out with, uh, with getting this auction up and running. Uh, I really appreciate those uh, sponsors and of course Phil and Trish Puglisi at Pugski.com for, for their internet prowess and some of the help and Dan who uh, dropped off earlier. Dan's our MC. We'll continue to uh, host these great events, host uh, the uh, induction as it comes up. We are going to be doing our uh, Sun Valley uh, press release in the next couple days. We are going to be announcing that we will go 100% virtual with the Sun Valley event. It won't be uh, happening on the ground in Sun Valley December 9th through 13th. So we'll be uh, issuing a press release with uh, some additional details on that. We are going to be inviting each and every one of the class of 2019 to attend either the uh, Aspen uh, Snowmass Village Colorado event uh, coming up in April of 2021 or when we go back to Sun Valley in 2022, 
uh, for our future inductions uh, and snow sport history celebrations, uh, but in collaboration with the International Skiing History Association and uh, the North American Snow Sport Journalist Association, Aisha and Nasja will be partnering up on some really neat live um, events similar to this uh, starting this fall as our new ski season kicks off uh, to honor people like Jim and his class members that Dan uh, introduced earlier in this call, um, as well as uh, you know our Women in Industry Award and some of the other uh, things that our partners do uh, during snow sport history uh, week and celebration. Uh, as Phil mentioned, we hope to get some really neat uh, guest appearances from some iconic uh, uh, honored members from the past, people like the in the background of, of Phil's uh, call today, Billy Kidd, Chris Davenport, it looks like Eric Schlopey over there, Kristen Cause uh, <clears throat> is in the background there, um, Chris Klug. We'll bring some of these people in and hopefully provide some entertainment value. Yep. Um, to some of these calls as we go to unique areas um, and get back to what what we're calling a new normal with uh, with events getting back online and, and rolling. So appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you, James. And thanks, Justin. All right. Thank you, Phil and Justin. Absolutely. Signing off. Thanks, guys. See you, Jim. Bye-bye.